Texas is famous for so many amazing things. Barbecue, chaps, assless or otherwise. Unfortunately, Texas has also become known for something way more harrowing than the idea of me and assless chaps, an incompetent government that distracts from its massive failures by, say, attacking gay and trans kids. There's no more awful and tragic and enraging example than last year's power outage that cost hundreds of Texans their lives. I know talking about energy infrastructure can be way less entertaining than laughing at Ted Cruz fleeing to Cancun before immediately throwing his daughter under the bus. <laughs> but just like paying your taxes or maintaining good dental hygiene, ignoring the unsexy topics only means they'll snowball until, well, Texans are scraping snowballs off Greg Abbott's improperly winterized natural gas plants. So to help keep you focused and engaged and entertained as we talk about the real nitty-gritty of the power gritty. <laughs> it's time for a segment we call Reality vs. Reality TV. <laughs> to help us understand the state of Texas's energy policies and what we need to do about it, please welcome to the stage, he's running for the Texas Railroad Commission, which is about far more than railroads. Please welcome Luke Warford. Thank you, Luke. Coming. Thanks for having me, John. Let's see. What do we got here? John, I, I brought you a present. Oh, it's a hat that says, unfuck the grid. Where can they get the hats, Luke? They can go to lukewarford.com slash love it and get 15% off. 15% off. Just for love it or leave it fans. As we learn the intricacies of what we can do to create cheaper, greener energy in Texas, it's also important that we learn about the intricacies of the Real Housewives of Dallas. So please welcome back to the show our resident expert in this topic, producer Kendra. We don't have to, we don't have to exchange pleasantries. I'm here to contribute absolutely nothing of substance, and I'm very excited. You're not doing substance. That's not your role here. Me neither. No, you're doing <laughs> Luke, you're going to do a lot of substance. That's the beauty of this segment. So the way this works, Luke, is I'm going to ask you about what you see as the biggest hurdles for Texas' energy future, then to maintain the very limited attention span of our social media adult listeners, <laughs> by which I mean myself, I'm going to ask Kendra about reality TV. Does that make sense to you? That works. Let us begin. Luke. What is the Texas Railroad Commission? Who is on it? How many trains are we talking about? <laughs> a lot of trains. Okay. So, believe it or not, the Texas Railroad Commission actually has nothing to do with trains anymore. It used to, years ago, but they got rid of them in 2005. There's no more trains. No more trains, not a single train. And, <laughs> I know, it's very sad. But what the Texas Railroad Commission actually does is it regulates Texas's oil and gas industry. And, you know, Oil and gas is huge in Texas, right? And that makes it one of the most important elected offices in the state for our economy, for the environment, and for our ability to keep the lights on and the grid failure last February. Kendra. Yes. What was the Real Housewives of Dallas? Uh, Who was on it and how many trains did it have? I'm so excited that you're asking me about this because I know that you care. Um, there are no trains, I'm so sorry. No trains on Real Housewives of Dallas. Um, so when we left, when we last left our ladies, we had Deandra Simmons. I'm told Simmons is a big last name in Dallas. If there is any gossip that anyone wants to hand me, I'll trade you for Real Housewives of New Jersey gossip. I know a lot of people in Tana Fly just like Teresa. Um, next, we have Cameron Westcott. Again, another big name, I'm told, in Dallas. These are both Highland Park residents. Does that mean anything? Oh, yeah. All these people voted for Trump. Every, <laughs> and every city in this country has that neighborhood, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you've got your uh, Cameron Westcott. She kind of looks like Nicole Kidman, if, like, she, Nicole was dead behind the eyes. Then you've got... Um, Tiffany Moon, Dr. Queen legend. She's an anesthesiologist. Her husband owns that JW Marriott downtown. Um, <laughs> then you've got Carrie Brittingham, very boring. Husband hates her, does have one of the most beautiful hus uh, houses in Mexico that I have ever seen in my life. Um, Stephanie Holman, locker magnet. Every locker room in the country is apparently built by her husband. She also bought a pool or a house with a pool in the foyer. She has small children. I question that decision. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have Brandy Redman, who is a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And like, there's not much to say about her because I hate to call people like dumb or stupid, but as Ari said to me backstage, like the bones of that house are not quite sturdy. Like, there's like some things going on there. And then the last person I wanted to bring up 
was um, one of my favorites, Leanne Locken, a former carny uh, with um, a mean streak. I don't think we're allowed to say carny anymore. Oh, are we not? They say it on the show all the time. <laughs> Luke, <laughs> back to <John>. business. <laughs> Texas has the largest gas and oil output in the country. What can, addressing te- what can addressing Texas problems teach the rest of the country about how to tackle the issue of energy? <laughs> Where do I begin, John? Where do you begin? You tell us. <laughs> so, in most states in the country, when the uh, weather, when the temperatures drop, the lights don't go out, right? I, I think um, a lot of folks, uh, you know, maybe have been to New England or uh, Wisconsin, and temperature or temperatures drop, power doesn't go out. Here in Texas, that's not the case, and largely that's because the Texas Railroad Commission didn't do its job. We had a major winter storm actually back in 2011. Maybe folks will remember it. And during that storm, the grid here in Texas almost failed. It was pretty similar, actually, to what happened in 2021. And after that, there were all of these recommendations coming out about how our gas producers needed to prepare to operate in cold weather. And it was the Texas Railroad Commission's job to hold those companies accountable, to actually make them prepare. But they didn't do it, right? Mostly, you know, either out of incompetence or corruption. And, you know, we'll talk more about that. And then, essentially, what happened last February happened, right? Millions of people were without power for days billions of dollars in damages, hundreds of Texans literally froze to death. I know this is a lighthearted segment, but that's no. not very lighthearted. Um, and so I, I, I actually don't think other states in the country should, should learn from that, look at that experience and want to copy that. I think we should be making sure that in the energy capital of the world in 2021, our lights can stay on. Luke, can I ask you a question that I actually have been struggling to understand since this happened? Yes. Which is... How is it even a question about whether these people get to stay in power? How is it that, these, that after something like this happens, there, aren't, there isn't a mass, there isn't, there isn't a clear decision on the part of the people of Texas to say, this is completely unacceptable. Like, what is the disconnect right now that is making this such a hard fight just to get people to understand how completely unnecessary and unforced that crisis was? Well, and I, I think the, the prob- one of the problems is that the Texas, you know, we're joking about the Texas Railroad Commission's name, right? Because right. it's, it's misnamed. But, you know, if you ask yourself, why is it misnamed? It's because some people are benefiting from the confusion, right? They're benefiting from operating in the shadows. And I think when we, when we think about what happened last February, people are upset. And, and we do have a chance. Everyone in this room has a chance to hold our elected officials accountable this November because the Texas Railroad Commission was to blame and we can and should vote them out of power. Kendra. Yes. <laughs> Real Housewives of Dallas was the first Real Housewives franchise to be canceled, sorry, suspended indefinitely for racism. What happened there? And if we're being honest, how is it the only one to be suspended for <laughs> racism? Yeah, yeah so um, it does have the dubious distinction of being the first one suspended for racism. Uh, the other one, I'm not sure if DC ever was officially canceled either, but once you sneak into the White House and like start tangling with the Secret Service, that's a problem. Um, but with Dallas, yeah, what ended up happening was they bought on Tiffany Moon, who I mentioned. She was the first uh, woman of color, an Asian woman, to be on Real Housewives of Dallas. The trouble started during a Lunar New Year party where uh, Cameron Westcott, the aforementioned Nicole Kidman with the dead eyes, she uh, did not want to uh, be even in the same room as a chicken foot um, and really made a huge deal about it, like was insulting uh, cultural food, cultural traditions, norms. Uh, So that happened. And then uh, later on in the season, her husband, whose name is Court, uh, and his brother, whose name is Chart, C-H-A-R-T. Nope, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel it. Is that, is that real? That's real. Chart that's, and Court? Chart and Court Westcott. See, it's not weird to me. I went to boarding school. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, they got online, and, or Chart got online specifically, and accused uh, Tiffany Moon of, or insinuated that maybe that while she was practicing anesthesiology, she was uh, drunk with her patients. It's not great. This woman graduated medical school at the age of 23. She knows what the fuck she's doing. 
Anyway, they couldn't really square the circle on that one, so that show is gone. New York, on the other hand, coming back, we're getting a segregated and integrated edition, and I'm real excited. <laughs> uh, it's a whole beautiful, it's a galaxy of stars over there. <laughs> I, I thought the reality TV singer. part was supposed to be the lighthearted part of the segment. It's very dark. It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point, Luke. <laughs> Luke, what are the steps that you'd be taking to make sure that what happened in February doesn't happen again, um, given that they're, that they're not taking the actions they need to take right now? Yeah, that's a good question, John. And I think number one is we need to make sure that our gas producers are prepared to operate in cold weather, right? We need a weatherization rule that requires them uh, to prepare for cold weather so that what happened last February never happens again. Yeah, y'all can clap for that. So how many of y'all lost power or know wow. somebody who did? Wow. Yeah, and, and what was that like? John, for the podcast, will they pick out every, what I, every, I think they got the sense that everyone raised their fucking hands. <laughs> right, so I think the, the reason I bring that up is because, you know, that's true all across this state, right? And I think when we think about the Texas Railroad Commission, when we think about the grid failure, people, you know, rightfully so are like, can we win this seat, right? Can we win? And it's, you know, not just Democrats, right? It's not just the Pod Save, uh, Pod Save America crooked uh, audience that is pissed off about this. Everyone's pissed off about Rep Republicans, independents, Democrats. They know that we need to require gas companies to prepare to operate in cold weather. We need to identify which companies are critical to the system so that those producers don't lose power when it gets cold. These are basic things that, that work in almost every other state. And it's, you know, to your question earlier, it's just such a massive failing of our public servants, right? Like, it's, it's really unconscionable. And I think, like, people outside of the state miss that sometimes, right? Like, there's a, the grid failure just is, like, was dumbfounding. Like, it's, it's so fucked up. Like, how literally people froze to death because we couldn't keep the power on. And, and so, obviously, those are the steps you would take to prevent that kind of incredibly terrible... Yeah crisis from happening again, what are, the, some of the, what are the things you would do that aren't just about undoing the failures, but actually kind of doing some good in this role that's not happening right now? Yeah, yeah, for sure, 100%. So um, the Texas Railroad Commission, the other thing that's incredibly important about it is that it's been called the most important climate election in the country, right? And the reason for that is because it regulates the Texas oil and gas industry. Oil and gas is the largest greenhouse gas emitting industry in the country. And Texas is the largest greenhouse gas emitting state in the country. So in other words, uh, the Texas Railroad Commission regulates the highest emitting industry in the highest emitting state in the country. And the thing that's not happening right now is there's all these regulations on, on flaring and venting, which is a, a process that is the, the, the cause of so much of the emissions that are happening. And the, the current commissioners simply aren't enforcing the existing regulation, right? It's not even about making new policy. It's about they, they grant thousands of exemptions a year. They're totally bought and paid for by the people they're supposed to be regulating. And that results in millions of tons of unnecessary methane and carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions. And so, you know, I've, I talked to folks outside of Texas about, you know, they're frustrated about the federal government. They're frustrated about the lack of action on climate. And like, we don't need to wait for Joe Manchin to have a come to Jesus moment. We can make a difference on climate right here by winning this seat in Texas. Kendra. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Why great, did you watch The Real Housewives of Dallas? <laughs> it sounds absolutely heinous. Is there anything that you could show us or explain to us about it that would help us understand why you found it so captivating? Yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> if we, uh, if, if you're familiar with Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, you might think that Lisa Barlow had the definitive hot mic moment. You know, calling your best friend of decades uh, a whore who slept with all of New York, including Harry Dubin, that's really something. But what I'm about to show you is the definitive Bravo hot mic moment from one Leanne Locken, the former carnival worker. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, Brian, you can, you can go. I want to get in the pit like this around here. How much fun. 
love that bitch she's terrible she's terrible she like she she's so racist she's horrible she had things to say about about like so much stuff about to say to say about one cast member from from mexico it was terrible but that is just iconic it's iconic <laughs> before we go luke what can people do in texas and people listening across the country to get involved and help right now yeah absolutely so there, there's two things. The first thing you can do is tell your friends about this race because I, I genuinely think it's one of the most important elected positions, not only here in Texas, but because of the climate implications around the country. But it's misnamed. It is not something a lot, you know, I, people always say it's like the most important election you've never heard of, but that's a problem. And so genuinely everybody in the audience, everyone listening at home can do a, a, a huge, uh, ha have a huge impact just by telling five people about the race. We've got a great launch video that's like tagged at the top of our Twitter at Luke Warford TX. It's 60 seconds long. It's fun and weird and different than sort of your typical political ad. So number one, you can tell five people about the race. The second thing is of course donate to support our campaign, right? Go to LukeWarford.com, chip in whatever you can. Our, our opponent, is funded, 70% of his campaign contributions come from the oil and gas executives he's supposed to be uh, uh, regulating. And just to, to in, including like $100,000 campaign contributions, right? So we're going up against this, this elected official, Wayne Christian, who's totally bought and paid for by oil and gas execs. And so it's gonna take a lot of people, right? We're building a grassroots campaign here in Texas to, to fight back, but it's gonna take and uh, you know support from a lot of people. So if, if people are willing to donate, they should go to lukewarford.com. Uh, everybody, Thank you. give it up for producer Kendra Thank for you. sharing. If anyone wants to tell me where the roundup is, I wanna know. She wants to know where the roundup is. And one more time for Luke Warford. It is time for a segment we call Hot Takes. Here's how it works. For real, we have not seen this. And we will be presented with a take, and we will have to defend it for one minute. I will kick us off. What do you got, Brian? Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol is the best Mission Impossible. I'm sorry, I know where that came from. I know that came from Kendra. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol is the best Mission Impossible movie. Here's why. Reason number one, you and I cannot remember the villain. That's how you know it was a great movie. Two, my favorite kind of action movie is an action movie where the heroes create 100% of the problems that they later have to go on to solve. A classic example of this is Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Indiana Jones leads Hitler to the ultimate source of power in the universe, only to later help Hitler yeah. find it when he's lost it, and then again help Hitler <laughs> recover it, and then when Hitler's people open up the fucking thing and die anyway, it renders Harrison Ford literally useless, whose only role in the final climactic moment is to keep his fucking eyes shut. Ghost <laughs> Protocol is worse because they literally almost cause a nuclear holocaust, oh. which is why I love it. <laughs> Excellent, wow. Let's see what these villains have in store for Aquila. I'm nervous. Best animated soundtrack of all time is Phil Collins' Tarzan. Okay. 60 seconds on the clock. It slaps. Uh, frankly, we were in the car on our way here and we were ranking Disney soundtracks and for some reason, Kendra thinks that it's number one. Uh, but it is, it really is. You know, Phil Collins didn't have to do all that for a movie about a bunch of apes, I wanna say. Are they apes? Are they gorilla? They're gorillas. They're whatever. Um, you know, we got Justin Timberlake on it. No, that's not it. 
Um, Rosie O'Donnell sings a whole song, and we're like, good for you. Um, I mean, uh, I'm thinking of songs from Mulan, like truly not ranking for me. However, um, uh, um, You'll Be In My Heart, definitely heartfelt. Um, Son of Man, I heard a man singing that out loud at a Lowe's. I don't know why it was playing over the loudspeaker, but he knew every word and he was not especially young. So like this is a, a soundtrack that endures. Tarzan Tuesdays, every Tuesday we like to listen. Go off, Phil Collins. And Lily Collins, you're great too, sure. All right. Tarzan <laughs> Tuesdays. It's Tarzan Tuesdays. Yeah, every Tuesday, get a little drunk and listen to Tarzan. Let's see what's up next. Alaskans are so lucky that they give vote for strong women like Sarah Palin and Lisa Murkowski. Ugh. I'll take it. I'll take it. Lisa Murkowski is good. She actually is good. Mm. Because this is a person who has taken some really hard vo votes on principle, got fucking lost, and then won in a write-in. I think that's cool. Okay. I also appreciate strong women like Sarah Palin. And let me tell you why. Sarah Palin is a great cautionary tale because Sarah Palin genuinely is, I think, a sincerely, like, I sincerely believe this, an incredibly sharp and smart person. And she was presented with two paths, one in which she opened the binder with facts about foreign policy and one in which she didn't. Sadly, she chose the wrong path. But I think that's a lesson for all of us because she is a good example of what happens when someone really smart doesn't read anything for a really long time. Yeah. And that's a lesson. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, yeah right. reading is the real enemy. <laughs> that's the problem. Remember how good she was in 2008? Sure don't. All she had to do was, she was, she was a great speaker and she has a great, she has charisma. I she mean, has, she said she, words. She has all the things a person needs except integrity or discipline. <laughs> And those are obviously important to us Glasses. as Democrats, not as important on the other side. Yeah, listen, you did that. I'm proud of you. That's Couldn't my job. Me. It was Couldn't a hot take. Yeah, you know what? That's the game. <laughs> I'm proud of you, man. Don't hate the player. Oh. Love on top is a skip. Akila, you think love on top is a, is a skip, so tell us why. You know, love on top is a skip, but only... So you can skip to other Beyonce songs. I mean, this woman has like thousands of good songs. You think it's only a few. It's not. Every album has, I would say, 80 to 90 percent, you know, must listen to if it comes up on shuffle. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas. Like, we're listening to Six Inch. It's happening. Uh, the bass alone. But, you know, Love on Top 2, I think you want to sing along to Beyonce songs. Her voice is so beautiful, and you're just like, I want to be there with you. But I can admit my limitations. Those key changes, she loses me around three. I'm like, I'm an alto lady. Like, I'm down here like, we put my love on top. You're pregnant. We love this performance at the VMAs. Like, we love it. Um, so, you know, I just think that for, like, the sake of the party vibe, you want to put something on, like, Get Me Bodied, Kitty Cat. Uh, I don't know. I mean, single ladies. There's so many things to choose from. Why limit yourself? You know, you can always come back to it on your own, but at a party, you got to skip it. Sorry. We love Love on Top, but you got to bounce. Wow. I'm sorry, Beyonce. If you're listening, I don't know why I really think she's listening. It's probably the alcohol. She's but if you're listening, listening, Beyonce, she listens I every love week. all your songs. Even the ones that like I couldn't name the title of, I, I still sort of sway in my seat. Hell yeah. Let's do one more. The chillest people own exotic animals. <laughs> all right. Okay, sure. God gave man dominion over the beasts. <laughs> Strong. <laughs> they, are, they belong to us. They are created for our sustenance and, if not, amusement. And I think someone with absolutely zero knowledge about animals <laughs> should be able to go on a kind of website that was not made by a professional mm. and use a little drop down menu to send an email saying they would like a cheetah. <laughs> I think that's a good thing for all of us that random people in every town, the weirdest, worst person who went to your high school <laughs> has some kind of endangered bird in their house. 
I think that's good. And I'm glad it's happening. I think you're right. I think you're right. Including certain people who work on this show and may or may not have a tortoise in their home. And I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. And that's hot takes. <laughs>